Mikhail, welcome to the Foot Traffic Podcast. I am so excited to have you here today. Stacy, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So oh, yeah. why don't we do this? Before we jump into all the good stuff, I would love to hear a little bit of your background, your entrepreneurial journey. I love to hear that backstory. And that usually gets me a little bit um, curious and pull out a few more questions and follow up. So let's yeah. jump in. Yeah, totally. So uh, for those who don't know, my name is Mikhail and um, I worked with Ty Lopez for three and a half years. I guess that's kind of like the, the claim to fame, yeah. if you will. And th this isn't like intern capacity worked. This is, you know, had Thanksgiving dinner with Ty level work, uh, helped him architect his back end CRM. And the way I got there is pretty fascinating. I'm an immigrant from Russia. So my mom at eight years old surprised me. She's like, surprise, you're moving and you'll never see your friends again. I'm like, to totally no, no, totally no trauma there at all. <laughs> so that was, that was a blast. Um, and then, uh, it went on to become a full stack dev, a uh, musician, and then uh, linked up with Ty and realized I can combine the really uh, high level technical skills of being, being a full stack developer with marketing skills. So mm -hmm. we're talking um, architecting backend uh, CRM systems, stuff like that, and found that to be kind of a superpower as far as uh, marketing, did that, then worked with a company called JumpCut. So that's another company at over uh, you know a million a month. They were about 1.2 per month uh, when I exited them and then went on to do uh, Real Social Dynamics, which was also... Uh, another company at about 1.2, like 127, I think was our top month with them. And uh, now I run a marketing agency. And what I do primarily is I help influencers monetize their audience. So we will find an influencer with million, 2 million, 10 million plus on say YouTube, for example, mm -hmm. in a niche, we'll build a digital product uh, catalog for them. We'll spin that up and we've been doing really, really well with that. Um, so that's the, that's the short little. Yeah, I love it. Well, day, and it's, but, it's yeah. important to share that credibility and plug those names because somebody might, they might see your name and like, ah, I don't know who this is and move on. And then you say Ty Lopez and somebody perks up and they're like, wait, what, what did you do? How did you do this? So I think it is important to let people know that backstory and where you've come from and what you've been doing. So let me ask you, since that was one of the first things that you brought up, where, what were you doing before to land a position with Ty Lopez? Like, where did your credibility come from for them to say, let's give this kid a shot? You know, so this, this is kind of fascinating, right? Because um, when you're behind the scenes and you're not uh, the face, it's a little bit like, you you know, you go to these conferences, I'm sure you go to these conferences and they're like, what do you do again? And you're like, yeah, kind of, you know, you're, you're, you're like the guy who provides the, um, the cement for all the construction. You know, it's not like the sexy thing, but right. yet you're like responsible for all this infrastructure. So uh, with Ty, honestly, at that point, it was just work ethic. So uh, what was going on uh, at that point in time is I was working relentlessly in music studios here in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, uh, I met my buddy Ben. He was playing bass with this band that I was producing. He's like, oh, you should meet my buddy Ty or my brother Ty, actually. And I'm like, sure, that sounds great. We, we go up and uh, he's got his um, house in, in the hills here, the one where he did that, that commercial. I'm like, oh, this is really nice. This is like the life. I'm like, what, what, what is he doing? Uh, <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, maybe you can interview. And um, I came in, it was pretty simple. I'm like, look, man, um, I will work as hard as I need to and just mm -hmm. show me what you, how you did this. And I just want to replicate this. I'm just going to be very transparent. I want to replicate this. Um, for myself. And he was like, oh, I've been waiting to hear that for a while. And then uh, tapped in. And then, um, you know, Seth Godin's got a book, uh, Lynchpin, right? Mm -hmm. quite, uh, quite a good one. So that's been my strategy from the get-go, whether that's, um, you know, being a, a consultant or being yeah. uh, an executive in an organization or being a founder uh, is become the linchpin to your organization or to any organization that you're in. Or if you are uh, providing marketing services, for example, as I'm sure quite a few of the listeners are, uh, become a linchpin for your clients in that uh, you want the phrase to be, wow, you know, that person is amazing. I don't know what I would do if that person wasn't a part of my business in some yeah. capacity. Um, and they just took it from there. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I'm so glad I asked that question. Okay, cool. So um, you consider yourself a fixer. Like, what does that mean? Um, who and what do you fix? Okay, so that's a great follow-up. Um, every organization has a knot, okay? So just like if, um, you know, you have a, a maybe a knot in your lower back with your body, uh, your whole body is going to be underperforming as a result of that knot. And often, if you can go and you can, uh, with, with targeted focus, unleash the energy that's kind of trapped there, uh, you can get exponential growth. You can get 300x, 500x growth. You know, we all focus on 10x, or sorry, 10%, 30% uh, logistical moves, uh, but we don't always think to look at the big picture of saying, okay, where is the knot in 
uh, my business. I'll give you, I'll give you some uh, three examples of this, okay, with each of the organizations that I was with previously. Um, with Ty, for example, he was spending a lot of time managing his developers. Uh, I said, look, man, you need to be doing content full time. And he's like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm handing you the keys to the Ferrari, so to speak. Yeah. Um, please don't crash my Ferrari. Uh, that, that was a really uh, serious decision for him to be able to let go of the technical side of the business entirely. Um, so that's what it means to be a fixer, is to be able to go in, uh, pinpoint the patterns of the business, see the potential uh, for the business as well, and to be able to unleash that. So that was there. Uh, with uh, Jump Cut, you know, they were a company, they were doing um, dating advice. And I said, look, you guys are doing dating advice. You have over 2 million subscribers on YouTube. There's a lot more people that want to be YouTubers than there are that want dating advice. Why don't we go ahead? Why don't we pivot the entire business model over to this new demographic? And what you're going to realize is you're going to, sh your, your revenue is going to shoot up. Of course, sure enough, we did that. And again, that, that wasn't a 10%, a 30% move. That was a 300, 500%. Uh, move as a result. And uh, real sort dynamics, same thing. There were some back end financial systems that were not dialed in uh, the way that they were compensating their particular instructors. We went ahead, we overhauled that, and we saw monumental growth because now the incentive structures aligned and people were able to predictably uh, get rewarded for the actions that they took. So mm -hmm. that's the best way I would describe it is yeah. being able to look at a system and say, where's this broken? What can we do? Mm -hmm. How can we fix it? And how would this scale up? Yeah. So both of those stories are pretty big moves for, or I, I should say like a pretty big ask for both of these companies. What were some of their hesitations or typically you see when somebody is really becoming the bottleneck in their business, like, what do you do to get them to say, okay, I see your side, like, Mikhail, this makes sense. Let's, let's head there. Uh, Jiu-jitsu, you just steamroll it, honestly. Um, yeah, because we, we all have blind spots. You know, we talk about this quite a bit where as an entrepreneur, you're completely at the mercy of your own psychology. And sure, we do our best to surround ourselves with the best people and get the best advice. Like this podcast is amazing for that, right? And get mastermind groups and get content and uh, do as much as we can to alleviate this blind sauce, but at the end of the day, we still have them. So the best way I can describe this is um, your vision should be strong enough and you should have the execution and the implementation behind that for the vision for their business to be stronger than uh, somebody else's competitive, right? It's simply a clash of frames, uh, pitch anything, uh, for those of you that are or in cloth, for those of you that are um, familiar. Uh, so it's jujitsu. It's saying, look, I've got this vision. I think we can do 5X. Um, but we need everybody on board and mm -hmm. either we're going to get everybody on board or I'm going to simply move on and do other things uh, with my time. And you guys will not have me as an asset any longer in this particular uh, mm -hmm. venture and being able to, to have the self-respect to say that I think is a big uh, Yeah, important. right. Which shows like you really believe in what you're communicating with them as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Such a good, okay. Good story. Um, so knowing that the, the dating company, you've asked them to completely switch, switch, uh, I mean, really businesses, right? Business models. Did you convince them? Did they have to let go of the existing business? What, like what happened there? And are they having to completely repivot and go down this new path? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, to use the, the jujitsu analogy again, if you have to hold somebody down the entire time, obviously you're going to get drained too, and it's not going to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So you do have to get everybody on the bus, so to speak. Uh, and they, luckily for me, you know, they were, they were a startup. Um, okay. I mean, these kids were 22, 23, 24 uh, wow. in that range. Okay. And they were doing 120 a month uh, at the time. So that was awesome. That was yeah. pretty cool. Um, you know, we're, uh, there's already a trajectory of success. And so a lot of that is uh, raising the right questions. Mm -hmm. So I always talk about this with marketing. This is a great little tidbit. Uh, I always market to a particular point in somebody's day. And that point in the day is when your head hits the pillow. Okay, I don't mark it to any other point. That's the main point is when your head hits the pillow, you have 75 different thoughts you can have. I want that thought to be about the thing that I implanted into the mind. And so um, that's the way that I went about approaching that is, is ask, uh, having them ask the right questions to themselves of saying, look, are we willing to continue down this trajectory and or should, I, should we evaluate other trajectories at all? I think that's the first question is, should we evaluate a pivot at all? Uh, and then from there, what are the most logical and or uh, beneficial, if you will, pivots yeah. for this organization? And then for them to actually self-consider all the variables and that way you're not having to constantly uh, justify. Of course, there was a lot of resistance, absolutely, yeah. uh, without question, but you want that to be a team effort and a mutual decision instead of you having to brute force it. Yeah. So, you know, as we're recording this, we're still in the middle of the pandemic, right? There's so much going on, lots of pivots happening, you know, with COVID. So would you recommend somebody who's thinking of this pivot, are they going all in kind of burning the boats, maybe leaving something else behind, or would you tell them continue doing what you're doing, but start the other revenue stream? Oof. Okay. Um, I know big question. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it, no, no, it's a, it's a big one. Okay. So here's, here's, here's my thoughts on this. Um, this, this is, I'm going to go macro first for a brief moment. Okay. So my belief is what's happening now is actually not that surprising. 
Uh, what's happening now is we are simply seeing the economic impact of a business model that has already changed, uh, but people haven't caught up. So um, all that, you know, quote unquote COVID is, is just, um, it, it's like if you didn't tend to your garden, the weeds are going to pop up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's revealing uh, the people that didn't tend to their garden and the business models that maybe weren't functional. Now, it's a shame that there's a lot of really great business owners caught up in this, uh, local businesses, um, you know, that, that's, I think, a separate discussion. Uh, so I think it's important to understand that is that the actual methodologies and the ways uh, of doing business are new. This is um, almost akin to the Industrial Revolution in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could, argue, you could argue that. And I think it's important to understand that this is a macro movement. Uh, for those of you that, that have businesses that maybe are, are struggling during this, you're not alone. This is a, this is a very large wave that's sweeping globally. And um, you, you're, you shouldn't feel isolated because of that. Um, simply uh, adjust your brain to the new methodologies of doing business and you will actually be fine. So now to answer the question um, yeah. in, in, with specificity, uh, I would pivot as quickly as possible and go all in as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, a perfect example of this, we've got uh, some business partners over in Nashville. Uh, I fly out there pretty consistently and there's a lot of retail businesses that are just just getting destroyed. And it, it pains my heart yeah. to see these people that have, uh, you know, they've spent decades sometimes building a great business, they've worked extremely hard, and uh, now they're not able to conduct business. And I believe um, you, should, you as a human being should have the capacity to provide for your family and to be able to conduct business if you so choose to. Uh, so what we're doing there is we're taking retail businesses and we're spinning up uh, digital channels for them. And we're saying, look, default on your rent, do it, do it. Because you can cut that cost right away and you can always pick back up. And uh, those are really difficult conversations. Those are not was, easy conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, that's kind of what 2020 is. It's been the year of difficult conversations, difficult decisions, right? Um, we just have to make these hard decisions. So I appreciate your point of view on that. But yeah, it's definitely a reality for a lot of small business owners, you know, na nationwide and obviously really globally, right? So thank you for that. Um, now, as we're talking about, you know, 2020, wrapping up the year, really thinking about where we want to take our business in 2021, what are some trends that you are seeing right now that we need to be thinking about, we need to be doing with online marketing, um, just more in this digital space? Sure thing. Uh, before I unpack that, do you mind if I add one little mindset yeah. tidbit to the previous one? Yes. We'll so um, you get to do this, okay? At the end of the day, entrepreneurship is, is a huge um, blessing. And just keep in mind, whatever struggles you're going through in your business, at the end of the day, we're alive, we're here, uh, we're hopefully healthy. And uh, even something that might be labeled by society as a bad experience, say having to shut down your business, say uh, having to file for bankruptcy as so many people are having to do. I just want you to kind of process the gratitude component of that mm -hmm. and to say, look, I get to experience this. I am here. I am alive. Because the alternative is, you know, you're not here anymore as a human. And that, that just, that, 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 that's the part that's, that, that really kind of sucks if you're part yeah. of my English. So I just want, I just want to uh, anchor that for people that are going through uh, quote, tough times. Um, there's no such thing as a negative experience. There are only experiences that you get to have and the lessons that you take away. Um, so I, I just wanted to kind of really cement that because it's yeah. going to help you move forward and make it more effortless for you to rebuild and you'll find yourself in a good spot, I think. Um, so uh, as far as trends, uh, you know, the human element, I think is the big one. Uh, I talk about this quite a bit is that with more and more and more automation, it's becoming more and more important for us to have a true long lasting emotional connection. We are, I think, in a big way forgetting what it means to be human, especially, especially digital marketers. You know, the amount of conversations I have about people using certain tactics and techniques that I like, I can't, like my heart literally flutters. I'm like, you're going to do that to your, to your audience. Okay. I, I, I don't know if that's a good, I, as your doctor, I would not <laughs> recommend that. And, and they're like, yeah, it'll be, they'll be, and I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Um, and, and what I mean by that is uh, it's so easy to, you know, pop up a lander, make a claim under fulfill and still make lots of money. Yeah. And I think that that um, reward mechanism is very deceptive. The fact that you can make six, seven, sometimes eight figures um, off of something that is in a way kind of a fluke, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, re it triggers your reward system. It triggers the dopamine system of your brain to say, oh, keep doing more of that. And I think that is extremely, extremely dangerous. I think we as humans, like as human beings, not just as marketers, but as human beings, we need to say, look, we are here together on this planet and we need to look out for each other mm -hmm. and digital marketing, the way that I view this is right now, it's a superpower. You know, we, um, I mean, your audience understands this. 
we've had it. We've had it in our toolbox. We spend a lot of time, those of you that are listening, you probably spend a lot of time honing your copywriting skills, your email skills, your page building skills, you name it. And uh, it was, it's kind of like you're the nerdy kid in the back that knows yeah. math. <laughs> and and you're, you're, you're always picked on, but then those kids like start the companies and hire everybody else, right? It's a little mm-hmm. bit of like a funny thing. So, so we're seeing a bit of that. So I think it's important to understand that if you right now are listening to this podcast, if you're into digital marketing, you have a superpower and it is your duty. It is literally your duty as a human being to use that superpower for good, to help businesses that are in need to get back up on their feet, to scale your business. I think you should be a little, I think it's okay to be a little bit selfish and say, look, I'm going to scale a seven figure, eight figure company. That's what I want. I'm going to go for it and I'm going to do that so I can help others. Um, so I think that's the big trend is, is getting back to the human element. What is that thing that we can't replicate with AI? What is that thing we can't replicate with machine learning? What, what is that thing that I can't automate in uh, Infusionsoft or an active campaign or in any of, of, of the platforms that I have? What, what is left at the end of the day? And there's this pure essence um, of who you are as a human being. And I think it's really, really, really important. And it's going to become even more important for yeah. us to, as marketers, talk to that. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing, whether or not somebody even identifies as a digital marketer, I think 2020 has made us really shift and go, if we don't identify as a digital marketer, we are going to be in big trouble. So I could not agree with you more. I'm a big fan of automation and systems, but there has to be that human element like you're saying. So can you give a suggestion or like an example of what that human, you know, connection would be or what you would do for potential customers or current customers? Sure. So I would use um, one of our lovely clients uh, as an example. His name is Matt Stefanina. He has uh, 12 million on YouTube. He does dance. Okay. He's a, he's a dance instructor and talk about an industry that got massively disrupted by this, right? Do you know that I own two dance studios? There you go. Yeah. So I, besides my online business, I have two dance studios in person locally here in Wisconsin. So I'm aware, but yes, keep going. But you know, we have a lot of dance studio listeners, so they'll love this. This is perfect. And we have uh, an amazing online dance academy that we built exactly like this, right? We said, look, you can't run your amazing classes that you usually run, but I'm really sorry. What can we do on a pure revenue basis and an impact basis? I think it's important to keep those both in mind there. Yes, there's revenue. Yes, there's profitability. Extremely important, right? Uh, Average order value, lifetime value. Yes, yes, yes. hundred percent. But there's also the other component of impact of did you change somebody's life, yes or no? And I think, um, you know, uh, those of us that are listening, we want that. Uh, I think the money is, is, a, is a byproduct. It's an output of that impact. And too many people focus on just, just looking down funnel, optimizing down. I think that's it's very important. Um, we're big fans of that, but I think you have to have that impact in mind. So what we did with Matt is we said, look, man, uh, let's go ahead and spin up a digital academy. <laughs> You've got these kids, you know, that are driving their parents completely bonkers throughout yeah. this thing. Let's turn uh, this bug into a feature, if you will, <laughs> this global bug right. really in, into, into a feature. Um, and, uh, you know, what he focuses on as far as um, maintaining, say, that, that emotional rapport and that relationship with list, some of the things I talked about is um, it is very much vibe based. You know, there's a lot of um, fear. There's a lot of these uh, interesting thought vibrations, if you will. And that might be a little too esoteric for the audience, but there's, a, you know, just look at any media source, right? Yeah. They, they're trying to disrupt the uh, positive patterns of thought are being disrupted. You'll be like, everything's good. And then uh, all these triggers are coming at you. They're like, no, yeah. it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. You're like, no, no, trust me, everything's good. So being able to reset that for yourself, uh, for your loved ones, for your family and, mm-hmm. and for your audience yeah. right now for the next six to nine months is critical critical, critical, being able to say, listen, everything's fine. And people are like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? It's a nightmare. No, no, it's not a nightmare. Everything's fine. We have better infrastructure than we've ever mm-hmm. had historically. Uh, if you look, you, you know, we, we have um, these things called chairs in the sky called airplanes. Like we have, right. uh, uh, you know, I, I use this analogy a lot. It's like, if, if you put me, okay, on this planet, I consider myself a pretty smart individual. If you put me on this planet, like with nothing, the amount of time it would take me to get to chair in the sky is so long, <laughs> okay? I couldn't do it, right? And so, so uh, take the time to process that and then deliver that same essence to uh, whether that's your email list, whether that's your uh, Facebook group, whether that's your uh, Instagram following, your YouTube channel, uh, what have you, or this podcast, which is amazing. Uh, deliver that sense of essence and of certainty and of grounding energy uh, and people will gravitate to that because mm-hmm. everybody else, there's so much um, mosquitoes out. I yeah. call them the mosquitoes, you know, like, and, they're out, and you have to kind of force field those out and go, no, everything's good. We're here. And it doesn't mean um, 
to just to be clear, it doesn't mean neglect information. It doesn't mean put anybody else at risk. Uh, it doesn't mean um, be arrogant or ignorant, yes. um, but, it, but it does mean evaluate the factors for what they actually are. And those are, number one, we have better infrastructure than we've ever had. Uh, we have better systems than we've ever had. Uh, we have uh, better economic potential with these systems than has ever existed in history. Yeah. Uh, the standard of living um, for the average individual is far, far greater than it's ever been. Uh, and on top of that, we have this amazing thing called uh, internet marketing, where we now do have a pipeline to be able to facilitate content and business models remotely, which uh, people yeah. completely forget. Like we're having this conversation and we couldn't do this very, very, like the history of humanity, very recently, we were not able to do this at all. Mm -hmm. um, and people, people forget to see the big picture. And I think if you pause for a moment and say, wow, maybe this is a time to pause, to reflect. Maybe it's a time to connect on a more personal level because people um, are in fear and they, they need that stable uh, foundation. So that's yeah. my biggest recommendation. Yeah, I love it. I think the best thing we could do right now for our audience, our following, our customers, I keep using the, the phrase like realistically optimistic because you can't be so optimistic, like you said, where you come off as ignorant or arrogant, like what is, she doesn't know what she's talking about, right? But when you're realistically optimistic, it almost is calming and people want to stay in it, that energy field of somebody who is like really saying, no, 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 we've got this. Like, we are going to take this, you know, we're going to take this one step at a time, come with us. Right. And I think that's something we've done really well in our studios, in our local brick and mortar to get people to say, I'm still signing up. Right. Uh, we had somebody message us and say, my kid normally does three activities and you're the only one we are coming back to in fall because we feel so good about the way that you're handling this. And that makes a difference with what you're saying about putting that energy out there. So I love that you, that you shared that. It's huge. It's amazing. And what you're seeing, keep in mind, it's not that your previous skills are no longer valid. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the, the analogy I'd use is you are used to being an electrician and now there's no carpenters. That's the best way I can describe it. You're used to running your business a certain way and it's close. It's very, very close, right? To run proper electricals through a house. You need to understand the way the house works. You already know the house, you know, the layout of the house and you know, the basics, you just don't know carpentry. So all you need to do is you need to bunker down, uh, and learn the new skills that you need to have. You know, it, it really is, I think, um, just such a shame that not, it's not taught. You know, it's, it's not taught that, look, Facebook is the largest data source and Google is the largest data source. So if you want to, you know, reach the most people, those are the channels you should be using. Mm -hmm. um, why is there this stigma that if you're a, a Facebook marketer or a Google marketer that you're like somehow bad? No, that, that's completely inaccurate. Um, so it's just, there's a couple of uh, tools missing from your tool belt yeah. and you're standing there in the middle of this house and you're going, ah, I need to put the wall up. I just don't know how to do, I, I'm an electrician and a plumber. I know yeah. electrician and you know, I know an electrical, I know plumbing. I just don't know how to pull the wall, put the wall up. And so uh, for those of you that are listening, I want you to kind of take a, a deep breath and look at the, the toolbox of skills you already have and, and be grateful for those and understand that you only need to add a couple more of those tools to your tool belt and then you'll be able to thrive uh, and definitely survive and if not thrive in this current um in these current conditions which uh, arguably again are taking all the power and they're, they're, if you know digital marketing it's a superpower now obviously there's mm -hmm. ch challenges but with new challenges what new opportunities as well um and so i think anyone who just says th things are bad things are bad things are bad i go i go that's oof i kind of let yeah. it float over i go what can we do? what can we actually do mm -hmm. uh, that practical optimism as you mentioning i think is yeah. extremely important yeah yeah so i love what you do because i always tell people follower count does not equal dollars in your bank account. So you've got to be really, really careful. So I love that you're helping these influencers actually monetize and make this a real business. Now, somebody who's listening, who doesn't have 12 million subscribers or, you know, these big numbers, do you have any tips or strategies for them, you know, starting to grow their following, but still being strategic and mindful of monetizing as well? Absolutely. Uh, so number one, um, content format matters by platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. You cannot just create a YouTube video for YouTube and then copy paste that onto every other platform and assume it's going to work. Uh, look at what's working on that platform. The way I view this is every platform is kind of like their own little city, yeah. you know? Uh, and so if you, if you come to LA and you're like, you have a cowboy hat on, you're going to kind of stick out like a, so it might be cool. It might be your thing. Right. Yeah. But, but you want to kind of uh, play yeah. to the ecosystem, if you will, uh, of that platform. So that's number one is content uh, format matters. Uh, number two is content targeting matters. 
and specificity uh, makes a huge difference. You, you know, who are you speaking to specifically and speak to them. Uh, some of the biggest mistakes I see people make when it comes to copywriting is to generalize, right? Uh, if you are the type of person who is not a very good phrase, hey, if you resonate with this, it should be because as, as soon as you create group dynamics, people tend to actually push away group dynamics mm. because it's not individual. Uh, whereas something that's individual, they tend to gravitate to that. So always ask yourself, who am I speaking to? And what is the language that I'm using to speak to them? Yeah. And also what are the patterns within that language as far as positive anchors and negative anchors? Uh, I see a lot of people with, with good intention to set a lot of negative anchors towards their own brand by not having clear communication. So simply clarity of communication, uh, I think is huge. Uh, obviously consistent releasing, that's a no brainer. Uh, if you're talking organic, um, getting you know all the seo stuff right great thumbnails great descriptions great tagging awesome easy and then uh, the the third and this is important is don't wait to monetize i see so many people say i'm gonna release a video and i'm afraid to sell and this uh, this is something that i think everybody at one point struggles with yeah is this uh idea that you don't deserve it that you don't deserve the seven dollars or the twenty dollars or the hundred dollars or the hundred thousand dollars that you are not deserving and to um, i challenge every person listening if uh, you are selling and not hitting the numbers that you want or if you are not selling yet to pause for a moment during this podcast and ask yourself how much like what do i deserve how much money do i deserve and and feel it inside your chest congruently honestly with yourself and if your answer is I don't deserve 10,000, let's say 10,000 a month, you know, was a big benchmark, I think for a lot of people, because mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of the, the, that freedom point. Yep. Uh, so if you go deep down inside yourself and say, I don't deserve $10,000 a month, you need to ask yourself why. Yeah, because what's going to happen is your energy and your actions are going to reflect your identity. And therefore you are going to self-sabotage your ability to actually get that because subconsciously you don't identify as the type of person that has 10,000 a month easily or 50,000 or 70,000 or a hundred thousand a month mm-hmm. uh, effortlessly. Uh, so starting with that, and then your actions will uh, domino effect follow that identity set point that you truly set for yourself. But it has to be honest. You can't uh, brute force yourself into it. That's n- n- never really going to work. You have to accept that, okay, you know, $25,000 a month is actually not that much money and you deserve it. Yeah. And it's now possible. You, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think that's one of our biggest objections is how I'm, I'm a big preacher of like, you got to monetize right away. And people will say, but I'm getting ready. I'm not ready quite yet. I'm still working on this. I'm still getting, and I'm like, no, 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 there, you can do it right away. So I love that you're saying that because we've got to, I always tell people I'm disappointed. If I watch a YouTube video or I watch somebody go to a conference, I'm amazed. I love their stuff. And then they're like, bye, see you later. Like what, wait, how do I, how do you teach me more? Right? So don't disappoint the people that loved it. Cause that's who you're really talking to. That's huge. And also keep in mind, every time you choose not to pitch, you're actually creating a habit. So mm. this, this becomes a, uh, again, it, it, we, we are just human, right? At the end of the day, we uh, have these chemicals and they affect our mind state, right? Have you ever have that where you go to the gym, you feel amazing after because of the endorphin rush? Of course, everybody has had that. So what's happening is with business, if you're taking actions and you're not selling, you're actually, uh, uh, you're actually preventing yourself from having a dopamine spike at the end of that action. So let's say it's a $7 uh, ebook that you created and you, you take 11 actions and then you sell one. Okay. You have now trained yourself that after 11 actions you could have, and sure it's enough to get, you know, a coffee. Uh, it's not anything uh, stellar, but you are training your brain to release dopamine off of the actions that you're taking. Whereas if you don't have that component, there's actually very, uh, there's almost no way for you to reward yourself for the hard work that you're doing. Sure, you can say, wow, that was a great video, but at the end of the day, we are hardwired to have dopamine trigger off of certain things. Now you can rewire that, that's a whole separate discussion on how to rewire dopamine against cortisol actually, and have dopamine trigger from each of the 11 actions, not from the reward center. That's a fascinating construct, but we can unpack that another time. Um, So yes, absolutely seconded, so as soon as possible, pitch, 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 Um, get that habit, and that becomes a routine. And once it becomes a routine, it becomes effortless. And once it becomes effortless, it becomes scalable. Yes, I love it. Um, what are some platforms you recommend leveraging now in 2020? Do you have favorites? Talking, talking pure tech. Man, there's so, okay, there's so, there's so many of these. Um, I mean, <laughs> what level are we talking? Are let's, we talking? Let's just say yeah. like social media platforms right now, what should we be really utilizing 
Okay, so, so I mean, the no brainer is gonna be the, uh, the YouTube, the Instagram, the Facebook, the LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. So I think LinkedIn right now is a huge blind spot for a lot of people. Yeah. There is so many quality, the amount of quality leads on LinkedIn, it just brings me so much joy. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's professional and it's targeted and it's a uh, high ROAS, it's, it's quite amazing. So uh, if you have a, say a, a consulting offer or if you have any sort of offer that caters to professionals, mm -hmm. I highly recommend LinkedIn and uh, getting more innovative with your funnels. Yeah, you, you okay. have to understand everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's copying each other. You know, there's a reason it's called copywriting, right? Because you copy somebody's writing and you color code it and then you change it. And it's like, cool, okay, that's awesome, good for you. Um, but I always say uh, you want to build a moat around your business. So what you want to do is take a look at the current ecosystem. Uh, let's say you are, uh, let's just use the dance space as an example, yeah. right? So let's say, let's say you're in dance and you have a, a physical dance academy and a digital dance academy, and that's, that's your passion project. And you want to be able to take a look at the space okay, and go, okay, in uh, where are the leads? Where are the eyeballs? I always start with that and say, okay, look, YouTube has a lot of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a very wide uh, field, right? Very wide field. Okay. YouTube has a lot. Instagram has a lot. Uh, Facebook probably has fewer. You know, Facebook's a much more personal platform. Yeah. Okay. What about, what about LinkedIn? LinkedIn maybe has a lot of dance studios that you could partner with if you so wanted to. And so then you start to cater your content specific to that platform and start to ask yourself the right questions of saying, mm -hmm. well, what am I trying to do on YouTube? I'm not trying to reach a small number of people on YouTube. I have to reach a wide range of people on YouTube. So your content's going to reflect that. Instagram, same thing. It has to be very visually compelling. You have a fraction of a second to make an impact on that platform. Amazing. Uh, what do your ads look like? What, uh, how are you curating your creatives by those platforms to curate not just the, uh, you know, everybody does the aspect ratio change, right? Um, but nobody does the content flow change. Uh, I, I see this as one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they will take uh, the YouTube video, they will put borders on it and they'll yeah. pop it up on Instagram. But what might work better is you take just a hook from that YouTube video. You mm -hmm. take that, you make a short piece of content, 30 seconds, 25 seconds, 15 seconds around just that hook only. Yeah. And maybe that works quite a bit better, especially if you're running um, ad spend to something like that. Yeah. So th that's the very macro. Obviously we can go into, yeah. into technical platforms and that's a whole nother, you know, looking at SEO with Majestic, looking at uh, advanced active campaign. Uh, I'll give an, a, a quick advanced tip on what okay. we're doing a lot of, and that's um, dynamic bu buckets uh, inside of active campaign by average order value linked automatically to Facebook audiences. Uh, so, oh. so this one is great. Um, for those of you that are a little bit more advanced, I'll just uh, run through this very briefly. So what we're doing is let's say we have a, a product catalog uh, anywhere from uh, $7 all the way up to $2,500. Uh, what we will do is as those leads come in, we will obviously tag them with the product. Everybody does that. Everybody tags mm -hmm. it with has bought so-and-so product. Okay. But what uh, a lot of people uh, overlook doing is saying, okay, uh, how does the average order value ascend? What is the lifetime value on the client? So then what I do is we go ahead and we create, um, I call them layers in the cake. Uh, yeah. So we will have like uh, our, you know, uh, low level layer and that would be between zero and $10. And then we will have another layer that's between, um, you know, uh, $10 and $50. And we will have these layers in the cake based on lifetime value. And we're asking ourselves, look, this person's paid us between 50 to hundred dollars. What is the offer? What is the, the most logical next offer for us to present to them? Mm -hmm. And so rather than just saying they bought this product, let's build a funnel linearly to the next one. Um, everybody's familiar with that. Everybody's familiar with retargeting waterfalls, right? As you can yeah. go through. Okay. But what if you were to approach it from more of a psychological standpoint of saying this person's already invested 75 bucks. You know what? There's going to be an offer at right around hundred to 300 that they should have the capacity to purchase. Let's go ahead. Let's frontline that offer. And then let's waterfall this way. So we're not necessarily um, differentiating and then we do that all the way up. Uh, so we're not just saying if you, uh, uh, it's not an A to B, it's kind okay. of a sequence too many. And that's working really, really well. And then what we do is we automatically update the Facebook audience on the back end for that, which completely changes the retargeting stack. So now what you have is when people are in, uh, engaging with the brand, if somebody is, uh, has not bought anything yet, they're seeing a certain uh, methodology and a certain psychology of ads of very friendly, okay. come on in, we'd love to have you with us, amazing. As soon as they spend a dollar, those ads go away. Those ads go away and there's a whole new layer of ads that then we present between say zero to a hundred, right? And as they go higher and higher up, uh, they're not getting served those same ads, which is great for frequency control. It's yeah. great for ROAS control. It's great for spend uh, control. I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of rules we have on the back end mm -hmm. that run that. Um, and, uh, and it creates a very custom curated experience. Just like if you were to get on an airplane, 
well, assuming you could, well, if you were to get an airplane, yeah. you know, if you're sitting in first class, you want to be treated a certain way, uh, and vice versa, right? So um, you want that experience to be curated for you to, in a way that feels personal, even yeah. if you, you know that it's not totally personal, that feels personal. So that's a more advanced strategy. Oh, wait, that was things. amazing though. Like it, if you you're like, I'm so confused at what he just said. First of all, go re back, rewatch that, re-listen to that. That was so good. And here's the thing, you're right. People get annoyed. If they've already purchased something and then you're pitching them something that talks about the same product, they're like, take me off this list. Like, why am I seeing this? I already own this. So I do think we need curated content for the, the people that are in certain buying stages of our programs and products and services. So I love that strategy a lot. Absolutely. And then what you do is you still tag my product and then you exclude all the email sequences out for those products and the ad, um, and the, uh, ad uh, creatives and campaigns for those products. So now if somebody uh, happens to have bought a lot of really low ticket products, yeah. uh, then you know they don't suddenly get reserved those same products. You exclude them out and you have this kind of shotgun approach that then pulls out the non-relevant. So rather than saying, let me only market what's relevant, yeah. we're saying, no, let's shotgun and let's pull out all things that are not relevant and see where people land. Um, because again, with you, it's a perfect example. You're like, hey, I have dance studios. I'm like, wow, okay, that's, you know, that's amazing, right? And, and that's something that you wouldn't discover if you didn't take that type of approach. So. Yeah, for sure. And here's the thing, don't let this overwhelm you as you're listening. Just know that your work in progress when you're talking about your funnels, right? When you're talking about your social media platforms, you are a work in progress. So take one thing or two, two big things away from this that you can implement now. Mikhail, this has been so great. Any last thing you wanna share before, and, and I'll have you share too, like where can people find you? But if there's anything else that we haven't covered or you wanted to share before we go, um, definitely do that now as well. I, I just wanna reiterate that you get to do this. Honestly, that's, it's so big. Yeah. Um, I, I talk pretty openly in other podcasts, you know, about um, my personal struggles with say depression or overwhelm or mm -hmm. just having so much on your plate that you just don't know which thing to do and you have task fatigue. I'm very open about those types of things. And uh, just for those of you that are listening, just kind of be able to take a deep breath, look up at the sky, understand the universe is always expanding. We're, we're just these little people on this rock, you know, that happens to be flying around a giant fission reaction. It's pretty crazy that we're even here. It's a total anomaly and that's really cool. And uh, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You're gonna get through it. It's gonna be great. Uh, your life is truly a gift. Uh, you know, I don't have a mortgage on my life uh, and just be super grateful. And uh, the people in your life maybe that contribute positively, whether that's friends, family, loved ones, um, maybe take a moment today and just reach out to them and just show some gratitude and help them maybe get into a state of gratitude. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, that, that's really um, the main thing that I want to reiterate. I think people really need more happy thoughts, uh, oh, yes. especially right now. Yeah. More now than ever. Uh, where can people connect with you? Sure. Um, you can find me on Instagram at MVKBIZ. That's MVKBIZ on IG. And that's really the best one. I Thank mean, you yeah. so much. This was so good. I appreciate your time. You guys go check out Mikhail, check out everything he has to offer. And again, thank you for your time being here today. Stacy, thank you for having me. Blessings and namaste.